latest headlines and insightful stories to kick start your day. Well, let's begin. Now first we are discussing the Himachal floods because heavy rains continue to wreak havoc in parts of the Himachal Pradesh. Now rains triggered multiple landslides and flash floods leading to widespread damage in the state. Now the total number of deaths in the rain related incidents in the state since Sunday night has increased to 72 with Shimla alone accounting for 21 deaths. Now the rescue and relief operations are underway and the IAF has rescued over 700 people from flood hit Kangra in last 48 hours. Several houses in different parts of Shimla are also facing the threat of collapse due to the landslides. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Sukhvinder Singh Sukhu conducted an aerial survey of the flood hit areas to assess the situation. We are travelling through Himachal Pradesh to get you the ground reality. Uh, what is actually happening in the state after those flash floods and heavy rains which actually lashed parts of uh, the Himachal Pradesh. In particular, there are uh, three, four areas which are worst affected. The first one is Shimla, the second one is Mandi. And uh, right now, uh, we are coming to you from Mandi and uh, uh, I just want to show you how uh, these rains have destroyed this entire area this in particular is a, a sarka ghat area and this very road actually uh, leads towards the bus stand of uh, sarka ghat and in fact these were the small villages or small townships which were actually connecting uh, uh, to the main part of this very place now you can see around all the roads are washed away and uh, there is only mud on the ground both the areas uh, both the sides of the road one side is the cliff where uh, there is barely any space to actually uh, drive the car as well and in fact uh, there are hardly any people i can see around this very place and on the other side are those homes which are actually hanging on the cliff you can see these are all the vehicles who've been stuck which uh, the vehicles which are stuck at this very point for a very long time now because what we're given to understand at this very space the incident happened on the 14th of august and uh, after that this is the condition over here and today is 17th it's almost three days and on the other side of uh, this very road you can see how landslide has affected this entire area i am in the tati area this particular area um, is you can see the damage the kind of damage which has been done due to the landslide at this very point you can see how homes have been washed away this entire road has been washed away because of the floods uh, and in fact that flood caused landslide in this very area uh, now i can tell you one thing that this was one complete road and you can see how part of this road uh, has been completely completely washed away by these landslides. You can see these are some localites who have actually uh, come to pay a visit to um, one of their neighbors whose home has been washed away and in fact uh, they are living in uh, their home. Those people are living in their home. Uh, the condition is so bad that uh, uh, authorities have cordoned off this entire area and no one is actually allowed to enter this very space. You can see how this entire road has cracked and uh, uh, the water is also continuously coming from the upper sides uh, so that increases the risk of a landslide and also increases the risk of further more damage to the properties um, what we are given to understand there is no uh, particular number as to how many homes collapsed at this very site but uh, there were uh, many uh, uh, many people living at this very space because this is a residential area in fact this particular area is Tati which comes under Sarka Ghat uh, which is considered to be one of the worst affected um, in Mandi. Cloudburst which took place in Mandi on 13th of August has resulted in something like this. You can see uh, how this entire hill has collapsed and in fact the landslide was reported in the early hours of the 13th of August around 6 a.m. In fact you can see from up to that very point that cloud burst took place and after that cloud burst the water gushed in with so much speed that it got all these rocks with it and in fact this is a scary scenario playing out over here 
destroying many homes and in fact affecting around 150 families. This entire area has been classified as a red zone by the authorities. Yes, the authorities has given a red zone, uh, has, has marked this area as a red zone. But uh, as per the locals, nobody paid visit to this very site. This is Zuken Panchayat and in fact this is in Mandi town and you can see how the situation has turned back. The water is continuously coming down from up the hill and in fact it's going down there to that very spot. I'll show you the visuals from that place as well. You can see how situation is bad over here in Mandi. Uh, this was the home which was actually uh, damaged by these very flash floods which occurred due to that very cloud burst. The kind of destruction which has happened in Himachal Pradesh, you can see all around me this is what had happened on the 13th of August when a particular cloud burst took place here in Mandi and in fact this is the Zuken Panchayat area which has been worst affected by the flash floods which occurred and washed away many homes. This is the trail of destruction which has left behind now and uh, this in particular happened on the uh, morning of 13th of August when a cloud burst took place on the upper hill area and after that the water gushed in with so much speed that it washed away whatever it had in its way. Still there is a lot of uh, uh, damage uh, which is still here and this entire panchayat has been vacated and in fact now this is the red zone area. No one from outside is actually allowed to enter this space. There were two homes which were uh, seriously affected by this very flash flood which occurred on the 13th of August. Now, uh, this was the very home which was um, in the passageway of uh, this entire flash flood and you can see how bad situation is. Today um, is the third day and still uh, there is a lot of, uh, there are a lot of stones which are present inside, there are a lot of mud which is present inside and uh, these are all locals and the family members who are actually helping each other in actually uh, uh, carrying out this operation of emptying this space. Sir, you know the Congress party speaks in different terms, but now even in Himachal, what is the what do you want to say the point that is being made over the tragedy in the market? I think during the hour of crisis when you are facing a natural disaster, everyone should work in a collaborative manner and there should be one voice, not in different voices. As you said, different voices coming from the Himachal government, ministers speaking in different voices, languages, different kind of allegations being made is not helping anyone. The time today says that work in the interest of people, save their lives, save their assets and when the situation is normal then you can come out with a detailed report what were the reasons behind such kind of losses of life and the property and other such losses. But to blame some other state like Bihar and the people of Bihar shows the mindset of Congress. My Kangra Valley ke हमारे जो ये इंदौर और फतेहपुर है वहाँ भयानक स्थिति है बाढ़ आ गई है ऐसी बाढ़ पहले कभी नहीं आई और बाढ़ आने का कारण कोई बारिश नहीं है बाढ़ आने का कारण कि पोंग डैम से जो पानी छोड़ा गया वो कम से कम उससे जो नदी है उसने अपना रुख बदला और काफी गांव बाढ़ ग्रस्त हो गए हैं अच्छी बात यह है कि कोई वहाँ मृत्यु नहीं हुई है हमने मी सेवेंटी से लोगों को निकालना शुरू किया है मोटर बोट्स के साथ हमने निकालना शुरू किया है और तकरीबन बाईस के करीब हम लोगों को अभी तक निकाल चुके हैं पूरे जिला में जो तेरह से पंद्रह के बीच में जो बारिश हुई है काफी ज्यादा नुकसान हुआ है जो हाउसेस फुली डैमेज की जो रिपोर्ट है अराउंड टू सिक्सटी सेवन हाउसेज है जो फुली डैमेज है जो अभी तक हमारे पास रिपोर्ट आई है ये आंकड़ा इससे ज्यादा भी हो सकता है क्योंकि रिपोर्ट्स अभी और आ रही है फील्ड से इसके अलावा पार्शली डैमेज हाउसेज जो रिपोर्टेड है वो फाइव सिक्सटी हाउसेज पार्शली डैमेज रिपोर्टेड है दो कैटल का लॉस हुआ है और पांच सौ दो जो है वो डैमेज है टोटल जो मिला के थर्टी वन करोड़ का जो ये सिर्फ हाउसेस काउशेड कैटल का ही लॉस है पूरे जिला में अभी तक जो बताया गया है
मैं सजा हुआ था सर ऊपर की मंजिल में जो पुराना मकान उसमें सोया था मंदिर में हाँ जी मंदिर के बगल में मकान पुराना मकान था उसमें था सर सोया हुआ था फिर उतने के बाद धमाका हुआ धमाका होने के बाद मैं पूरा दब गया दबने के बाद मैंने आवाज मारी लोग आए मेरे को निकाला वेल द डेथ टोल इन रेन हिट हिमाचल प्रदेश कंटिन्यूज टू राइज एज हैवी रेन्स कॉज सिवियर डैमेज नाउ वील बी मूविंग आर फोकस टू चंद्रयान थ्री विच हैज हिट अ न्यू माइल स्टोन इंडिया इज इंचिंग क्लोजर टू इट्स जर्नी टू द मून एंड इज ऑल सेट टू स्क्रिप्ट हिस्ट्री ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ ऑगस्ट नाउ ये स्टडे चंद्रयान थ्री मिशन अचीव अनादर सिग्निफिकेंट माइल स्टोन इन इट्स लूनर एक्सप्लोरेशन जर्नी नाउ द चंद्रयान थ्री इज विक्रम लैंडर सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द प्रोपल्शन मॉड्यूल ये स्टडे and today the lander module will descend to slightly lower orbit around the moon <coughs> and the deboosting is planned at around 4 pm today now on 23rd of august the chandrayaan 3 lander will begin its final descent to make landing on the moon now this endeavor places india on track to become the fourth nation globally to achieve this remarkable milestone joining the company of the united states russia and china Uh, it's a it's a big day that successful separation has already happened your th first thoughts on this successful completion of this important step uh, this is actually a very complex uh, activity and uh, we are happy that it is happened uh, smoothly without any hitch huh? right and, sir and uh, this is a another major, major milestone i would say hmm. this one okay so my my last question to you about how chandrayaan 2 from chandrayaan completion of this mission how confident you are sir uh, basically this uh, we uh, we have gone through the data of chandrayaan 2 and uh, find out that the error what really happened then that errors have been corrected that number 1 hmm. number 2 this is this particular mission we added more margin a design margin Number three, wherever the, the redundancy is uh, increased, this one. That way, now this confidence level for this mission is uh, more. So we are expecting that this will happen very nicely without any problem. This. Successful separation, just a step away from a successful soft landing. look uh, i think the the journey that uh, chandrayaan uh, as a program and chandrayaan 3 in particular has been uh, extremely uh, uh, one that makes every indian proud uh, we have certainly demonstrated to the world isro has and the whole ecosystem around isro in design manufacturing that we are amongst the leading nations in the world in terms of this type of capability and i am very pleased today that chandrayaan 3 has uh, Uh, completed the success, uh, separation phase successfully and i hope uh, that uh, we will soon be uh, browsing the surface of the moon so this adds to the soft power of the country no it adds to the deep technology capabilities it adds to the confidence of our nation and it certainly positions india and the young indians that uh, to be a central player in the decade of technology opportunities that are coming in front of us the decade as the honorable prime minister has branded it that in these in that in that decade space and space linked technologies are going to be a very important part of the technology ecosystem and that the indian ecosystem in space and allied technologies will play a defining role there it is one of the one of the happy moments and uh, moments of achievement for uh, the entire nation isro and uh, the support given by our honorable prime minister i congratulate isro and our honorable prime minister narendra modi ji um, the separation has been successful and i am sure the landing will be very smooth this time and further investigations on the moon will be very successful and uh, it will be for the futuristic generation this chandrayana will be a landmark one
Well, we're getting an important piece of breaking input. Uh, well, NIA carrying out raids across Jammu and Kashmir at several locations in a Pakistan terror conspiracy case. Now, uh, according to the officials, the raids are part of NIA's probe in a terror-related case. Now, further details are um, awaited in the matter. And uh, for my viewers, almost two weeks ago, the National Investing, uh, Investigation Agency conducted raids in various places in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama district. And uh, in the connection with the terror links and terror funding cases, officials have said. Now, according to the recent... According to the recent reports, what we are getting right now is that uh, NIA is carrying out raids across Jammu and Kashmir at several locations in a Pakistan terror conspiracy case. Now, joining me on the broadcast is my colleague Tijinder Singh Sodi. A very good morning, Tijinder. What more details are we getting from the ground on this report? Uh, a very good morning to you as well. Uh, you see, uh, NIA is carrying out raids at multiple locations across uh, the unit territory of Jammu and Kashmir. The raids are underway in Jammu in South Kashmir, Shupian, so several locations right now, the exact number of locations where the raids are on has not been disclosed by NIA, but NIA sources say that raids are on. And as you rightly pointed out, that this is a, a terror conspiracy case where a conspiracy from across the border is being has to revive uh, terrorism in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir by sending in arms and ammunition using drones by carrying out uh, targeted killings across uh, the unit territory of Jammu and Kashmir and by uh, carrying out attacks on security forces by planting uh, uh, magnetic IEDs uh, which are being sent from across uh, the uh, line of control using drones. So, and, and also, but we have been told by the NSC that the dates are also in connection with uh, the OGW network, because if you see that OGW network of the terrorists, they play a major role in uh, carrying out, planning and executing terror attacks across the Kashmir Valley. And uh, you rightly pointed out that NIA has been continuously carrying out raids across the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was another raid at multiple locations in North, South uh, Kashmir and also mm -hmm. in several places of Jammu region. Other security agencies including uh, the uh, SIA which is the premier investigation agency of Jammu and Kashmir police, the SIA, SIU, they too have been carrying out raids but today's raids are significant because uh, they are being carried out at multiple locations across uh, the entire union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Tijinder, for all those details. Well, it's a mega crackdown on terrorism by the National Investigating Agency. Well, we are quickly moving our focus to the showdown over the death of a Jadavpur student which refuses to die down. Now, the university campus was witnessed massive protests by student bodies demanding justice for the deceased. Now, Trinamool Congress student Front and BJP Yuva Murcha staged dharna outside the university. Members of the BJP have demanded CBI probe into the matter. Now, in the wake of the student's death, the university issued new measures to improve the campus safety. Now, Jadav Jadavpur Registrar said that they will install CCTV cameras near the hostel gates. Now, other measures include checking of the identity cards in the hostel from 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. Now, university ID card is now a must to get entry inside the university. Meanwhile, the West Bengal leader of opposition, Subindu Adhikari, will visit Bogla and meet parents of the victim. Let's take a look at some of the reactions. मल्टी डिस्ट्रिक्ट जब होता है तब स्टेट पुलिस का काम में आता है जब मल्टी स्टेट होता है और मल्टी आपका कंट्री होता है तब सीबीआई एनआईए होता है ये मल्टी स्टेट हो गया जम्मू कश्मीर और पश्चिम बंगाल और जम्मू कश्मीर इज ए वेरी सेंसिटिव स्टेट बॉर्डरिंग स्टेट कैसे वो आजमल को कौन सर्टिफिकेट इशू किया यहां रेसिडेंशियल सर्टिफिकेट उसको ओबीसी कौन बना दिया वो तो बंगाल का आदमी नहीं है उसको कौन ओबीसी बना दिया कौन ओबीसी बना दिया कौन तीनों मूल का काउंसिलर एम एल उनका सर्टिफिकेट दिया ये सब तो पता होना चाहिए इसलिए इससे फिट केस पर नेशनल इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग एजेंसी और सेंट्रल ब्यूरो ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन
It's now more than 48 hours that the unrest in Jadapur University is still continuing. The death of a 17 years old boy has really led to uh, unrest in Jadapur University. You can see behind me still the students, they are in a sitting dharna. Students of different organizations, they are in a sitting dharna. And uh, right now, in, in they are also in every day, there are several uh, rallies from different organizations, uh, left organizations they are at that are inside. Uh, the Jadapur University with all this protest like they want the justice of this um, of this boy who has died on the other hand the Trinamool Congress and the BJP they are also uh, in a sit in dharna outside the university while they wanted to enter yesterday uh, there was a scuffle here because the university students who were here uh, they are backed by the left uh, some of the left unions they were of the opinion that how can uh, the people who are outsiders can get into the university so uh, you can see that they are sitting here and that is the uh, uh, that is the corridor where Pro Vice Chancellor, Dean of the Students, and all the uh, all the authority uh, people, authority uh, people, they their office they, in those places. But uh, it's very clear that uh, the students out here they are uh, sitting in a dharna. Well, it's time to slip into a very short break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more news and updates. When he talks about other alliances and how there are dis, uh, you know issues between them, when recently Om Prakash Rajbhar, who has joined the NDA now, has been giving the choicest of galis to no none less than the Prime Minister himself. But today the BJP is accept him, accepting him with open arms. Okay. His party also has a very serious gangster against whom there are criminal charges. But Mr. Punawala will now have to defend uh, that gangster. Similarly, in uh, Maharashtra, Ajit Pawar, who was supposed to be chakki pissing, pissing, are now honeymooning with the BJP. So, Mr. Punawala should first answer his, his own party's contradictions and his own alliance's contradictions okay. before uh, I'll, pointing I'll, fingers at other people. Yeah, I'll get him to respond to that. But one contention, I, before uh, I come to Shahzad, one contention which Akshay Marathe raised, and I'm not sure that that adds up or that's the way alliances work on the ground. And I want to ask Professor Sanjay Kumar this, as somebody who has tracked, you know, multiple elections in the past. In the 2019 Lok Sabha election in Delhi, yes. the vote share of the BJP, and of course BJP won all seven uh, MP seats in Delhi, was 56%. Second was the Congress party, it had 22% vote no, share, and the Aam Aadmi party had 18%. So even if you add, add the Aam Aadmi party and the Congress party, it comes to about 40%, which is about 16% less than what the BJP polled. Now, please help our viewers understand why in politics, as Akshay Marathi just said, just because AAP and Congress come together does not mean that the arithmetic will add up over and above what the BJP has got. And this is in 2019 as well as, of course, in 2014. Uh, Zaka, you have already mentioned, if, even if you add up the votes of Congress and Amadvi Party, uh, in, none of, in none of the seven parliamentary constituencies of Delhi, their vote is going to surpass the BJP's vote. This is based on the 2019 Lok Sabha election. We keep talking that even if the two parties form an alliance, all the votes of the two parties don't get merged. Uh, we have seen that transferability is, you know, maximum at the rate of say 80%, 85%. We are talking at uh, of, you know, like transferring 100% votes of Congress and Amadmi party in all the constituency. Still, we see that BJP would be leading because... It's a very simple fact. All the seven parliamentary constituency BJP had won in Delhi 
with more than 50% votes. If a party has already got more than 50% yeah. vote, no matter X number of parties join hands against that party. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. You're watching CNN News 18. Well, now we are discussing in yet another bid to provoke India, Pakistan has appointed jail separatist Yasin Malik's wife, Mushal Hussain Malik, as a part of Pakistan caretaker, Prime Minister Anwar ha Anwarul Haq Kakar's cabinet. Now, Mashal Hussain Malik will be special assistant to the Prime Minister on human rights in the caretaker cabinet of Pakistan. It is important to note that Yasin Malik was arrested in early 2019 in connection with a 2017 terror funding case registered by National Investigating Agency. Now, in May last year, he was uh, convicted by a Delhi court in a terror funding case and was sentenced to life imprisonment. He was accused of terrorism and inciting violent activities that disturbed the Kashmir Valley in 2017. Remember, this comes as Pakistan's caretaker Pri Prime Minister has appointed a new cabinet ahead of the national elections due in early November. Earlier, on August 9th, Pakistan's National Assembly was dissolved, ending the tenure of the government led by Shabazz Sharif and paving the way for <coughs> installing a caretake, caretaker setup. While shifting our focus to some positive and inspiring news, several temples in Jammu and Kashmir's Srinagar have been renovated and restored to its original glory under the Smart City project. Many of them were in extremely bad condition after the exodus of Kashmiri pundits in the valley, while one of them was damaged in 2014 floods. Now, temples including Durganath Temple, Shiv Temple, Raghunath Temple and Kat Kateshwar Temple were undertaken for conservation under Srinagar Smart City. CNN News 18's Ishan Wani comes here with his ground report. Let's take a look. The government under the Smart City project is renovating temples and other religious sites in Kashmir. Where I'm standing is one such temple which has been recently renovated under Smart City Project. This is a Shiv temple, an ancient Shiv temple, uh, which uh, existed here for a very long time. And uh, because of the floods in 2014, this got damaged. And uh, with no uh, you know, uh, way of trying to renovate this, the Smart City came into action. And then uh, this particular temple has been now renovated. There are similarly, there are other temples also in Srinagar. When the of Kashmiri Pandas took place, there's no one to take care of them and they, ha they were in a very bad shape and now the government is trying to ensure that all these temples and religious sites are taken care of, they are renovated and brought back to the glory and this is a similar story that we are seeing here in Srinagar where this particular Shiv temple has been renovated by the government under the Smart City project to ensure that religious sites are not only given a facelift but also they are renovated so that they could be brought back to their original glory. Well, this is a big bid to boost terrorism. Uh, I beg your pardon. This is a big uh, boost to uh, tourism in Jammu and Kashmir. Well, it's a wrap from my side. Stay tuned to CNN News 18 for more news and updates. Thanks for watching.